Yo, what's up? It's Dan here. I'm a content creator, videographer, photographer for touring bands and musicians. I have been for the past five years now. And today I'm gonna let you guys know the settings that I use, my go-to settings for gig photography. And you wanna stick around for the very last tip because that is the most important one that you need to know out of any of these. All of these settings that I'm about to talk to you are universal. It doesn't matter what camera you're shooting on, whether that's Sony, Canon, Fuji, Nikon, Nikon, Nikon? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So as long as you're shooting on manual mode, which is the little M on the dial, then you're good to go. Well, the first setting that I'm gonna be talking about is aperture. This kind of depends on which lens you're using. So some of them are f1.8, f2.8, f1.4, 3.5, f4. But I have two go-to settings that I use with my setup. My first kind of go-to for aperture that I use is f2.8. Now this doesn't matter if I'm using an f1.8 or f1.4, I will always move that up to f2.8. It just so happens that my main lens that I currently shoot on is f2.8 at its base. Don't worry if your lens doesn't go as wide open as f2.8, uh, just shoot it as wide open as it'll possibly go to let as much light in as possible. But generally I don't go below f2.8. So the reason I like shooting at f2.8 and not shooting at f1.8, f1.4 is because a lot of the bands that I work with have got quite a lot of movement on stage. Um, it's quite a dark stage as well, so whether you're using autofocus or manual focus, you're going to really struggle at f1.8, f1.4 to be able to get critical focus. If you just think the more that you open up your aperture, the smaller the focus point is going to be. If you're in a high pressure situation where things are moving around, it's quite a dark stage, you're gonna end up missing quite a lot of shots if you don't close down the aperture at least a little bit. I've come to realize in the past five years or so that 2.8 gives still gives me that really nice creamy background. Uh, it gives me a lot of separation still, but it also does give me that fighting chance of being able to nail the focus. So my second go-to aperture is f4. I use this a lot when I'm shooting from the back of the venue or from the front of the house where the sound engineers are. I use this to make sure that I've got several things in focus. So I found one in the band and the stage at critical focus, as well as getting the majority of the crowd in focus too. That would be something that I use f4 for. Or if I'm shooting from like the side of a stage and I'm wanting to get several members of the band in focus, then I will close down that aperture, go to f4, and you're still getting enough light into the lens, but you're also able to get several more items in focus. The second setting that I'm going to be talking about is shutter speed. I always start a show at 1 over 160 or 160th of a second. I've found that it's a great middle ground for still letting in enough light and being able to avoid those high ISO values where you're gonna end up introducing a lot of that gross digital noise, but it's also fast enough to make sure that you're capturing a nice, sharp, static image. The third setting I'm going to be talking about is ISO. This is the main setting that I guess kind of does differentiate between camera to camera because different cameras have different sensors, which therefore affect the best ISO values that they work at. I shoot on Sony cameras, which are notoriously very good for low light situations, but there are tons of cameras out there for different budgets that work great in low light situations as well. So I've just recently actually changed the way that I have my ISO set on my camera. Originally, when I was shooting on my Sony a6500, I used to start off the show at ISO 800, and then I'd move it no further than ISO 8000. So I used to adjust that on the fly, but my starting point would always be ISO 800. Now that I'm working with the Sony a7 IV, which is even better in low light due to the full frame nature of the camera, I'm now shooting at auto ISO. So where I have set at one point at 800 ISO and my second point at 12,800 ISO. But yeah, generally my starting point is 800 because that's gonna be the least amount of noise introduced. The fourth thing that I'm gonna talk about is always shoot in RAW. Don't shoot in JPEG, you're gonna be losing a lot of information. There's so many times where shooting in RAW has saved me when I've ended up getting a really good image. It's like you've got one chance to get that photo and it's either been underexposed or overexposed by lighting flashes. Uh, but I've been able to drop that into Lightroom and because I've shot in RAW, I've still got that information there and I've been able to save it by bringing the highlights back in, by boosting the shadows and I end up with a great image. So yeah, always shoot in RAW. 
The final tip, which I talked about at the beginning of this video is break the rules. So all the settings that I've spoken about are a great starting point. That's what I always start at every single show. However, every band you work with is different. Every lighting design is different. Every venue is different. Every show is going to be different. You're going to need to adjust these settings for the situation that you're in or for stylistic choice. You can use lower shutter speeds to create that like blurry punk rock look. I like to use that quite a lot. I especially like to use it with flashes where I, uh, I send a flash off and I move the camera around a little bit and it captures a lot of cool light trails and a lot of blurred motion. Push and pull the aperture as much as you see fit uh, to make sure that you're getting the image that you're happy with that you would like to see. Another thing that I like doing is shooting out of focus and just seeing what happens. I like to see a lot of shapes in shadows, the way that the lighting casts on members of the band or whether it casts on the crowd or just even an instrument. I like shooting them sometimes out of focus and it creates some cool images. And I mean, some of my favorite images that I've ever shot and that seem to get some of the best reactions are using settings that aren't the norm. Art is subjective, photography is subjective, and the odds are if you like the way that an image looks, there's going to be more people out there that love it too. So my advice to you would be pick up your camera, start messing with the settings, pull everything apart, learn how your camera works at the best points that it works at, and then go out there, use these settings as a bit of a starting point and then just learn your craft, create your own style and just enjoy it. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope it helps you. If you've got any more questions or if there's anything else that you would like to know, leave a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe for more tips and tricks that are gonna be coming soon. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one.